Flash tutorials ever! Welcome to another One Enter Flash tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a class that can detect multiple keys from the user. So this is great for if you're using games or any application that you need to get a specific key and with that key gotten, you can perform some sort of action. Many of us are using Sonoculars code, but I'm going to show you how to create a key down function from scratch. So the first thing you want to do is, of course, create that class. So like any other class, you want to set it up in a package, import the items that you need. So I import the stage event and keyboard event. And also inside here, we have our public class key down to extends to object make sure you do that I only have one variable right now private var keys pressed and that is data type to an object we have our constructor function ready to go this is flash develop if you're wondering this is you can do the same thing inside of your flash IDE meaning flash CS4 or CS3 one thing that you do need to note is that this will go into our custom class folder so if you haven't watched my custom class tutorial you need to go back and watch it but if you're using flash develop like me then you go to project properties inside of properties you go to class paths edit global class paths and add a folder somewhere on your desktop or anywhere else and you want to add that class because this is where we're going to save this class and saving it into a custom class directory allows us to use it with any application that we create. That means we won't have to rewrite this or move it or drag it around. Let us start creating the class. So I've shown you the structure of the class, very basic. If you don't understand this, then you shouldn't be writing a class. In fact, you should not be writing a class. With all that, let us create that key pressed object. So I'm going to put in key pressed and make it equal to a new object there we go and that's all to it now inside of my constructor function I get a core value so core which is data type to a stage because that's what we need to pass in for this to work so core dot add oop, that's not a dot dot add event listener and the event listener we want to listen for is the keyboard event. That's why we imported it. So keyboard event. And we'll put key down. And in the key down, we'll put add key. Capitalize key. And we want to do the same thing, but for the key up. So core.add event listener. And we want to make another keyboard event and key up. And we'll make remove capital K key. So we have these two event listeners already added. So the thing to do is, of course, to create those functions for those listeners, which is add key and remove key. So we'll make a private function. Function add key. And in there we put E, uh, oop, keyboard event, e dot keyboard event, and we return the data type that is returning is void. Alrighty, now we are ready to type in what we need to type in, which is remember that key pressed object that we just had. So key pressed, and inside these little braces, we'll put e dot key code, and close that square bracket is equal to true. Ooh, that's not how you spell true. So there you go. We're adding items to the key pressed using the key code. So every time you press a key, a key is added. So for instance, the down key is 40. And how do I know this? Because there's a chart with all the key codes. But if you're lazy like I am and just want to know what key is being pressed, then you can simply trace out what key is being pressed by putting a trace function e dot key code, and that is that. 
So now when the key is pressed, it'll just simply trace out to me and I'll find out what the key is in the output. Now it's time for us to create the remove key. So I'll just copy this. It's all basically the same code. So I'll paste it there. Private add key. We want to remove key. And inside here we'll remove that trace. We don't need it. And I, instead of it equaling true, I'll just remove this. And I want to delete. So delete. Delete key pressed dot E key code. So you simply do that. And what happens is whatever key is being lifted up, whatever key you remove your finger off of, it's deleted from the keys pressed object that we've created. So the last function we need to do is figure out if the key is being pressed, if the key exists in the keys pressed object. So what happens is you add the key, you remove the key, now it's time to check for the key. And the way we'll do that is creating a public function which will return a value, a true or false public function. And that function I call is, capital I-S. And we need the u integer, so we'll put key, keys, u int. And in that u integer, that u integer will give us, that's the number or the key code that we detect what key is being pressed. So, and also we need to make it have a return type of boolean. So, put boolean there. So, return. The thing we want to return is, is if the key that is being pressed is inside of the keys pressed object. So, it's a question, and that question returns true or false. So is this value, this u integer, keys, inside of the keys pressed object? And if it is, then it will return true. If it's not, it will, it will return false. So there you go. This is it for the key down class. So all you have to do is save it in your custom class directory or class directory. So I already have that saved there. And make sure you name it the same as your class name. So mine is key down 2 and you should save it as key down 2.as or for you whatever you name it name it that so this is basically it this is how you do it so let's implement it or use it and the way we would use it this is inside of a document class the way we would use it is we would put private variable and I'm using key down as the object you can name it anything you want you can name it hubula dubula and the hubula dubula, you would data type it to an object, but I'm going to stop saying hubula dubula. So after that, then you assign it to key down is equal to new. And remember the name of your function, or the class, which was key down two. Well, I'd need to change it to key down two. And inside of the parentheses, you would put the stage, and now we're ready to use it. And the way we access it is through the variable name that we use. So it could be hubula boobula, whatever. But this, this is basically new key down, which is the name. Whatever you named your class, this would be right here. And you would put the stage in. So the way I access it is calling this variable. I could have just left it as k if I want to be lazy. Like k is, well, anyway. So we have our key down dot is remember that is function and then we put in a number or that number specifically is the key code and 40 is the down direction so all these numbers represent something and I'll give you the link to all the key codes so anyway I put this inside of an enter frame right here I add an event listener to the stage and that event listener is go and it just checks to see if anything is being pressed so if 40 is being pressed if 39 34, 38, and 37. And like I said, I'll give you the link to the key code. Or you can just trace out whatever key you're being is being pressed, and then you can put it in there that way. So that's how you do it. That's how you create it. So when you try it out, press your buttons, they will move along with it. And I have mine tracing out too. So if I want to use A, 
I need to make sure I put an 87 wherever I'm pressing up. You know, the, the WASD, that's what gamers love to use. Well, anyway, thanks for watching this Ornithor Flash tutorial. Don't forget that all the code is available at my website and all the links and information. Uh, so go over there, donate, please, you know, rate, subscribe, comment. Help me out. You know, I just helped you out, you ungrateful. Do -do -do, the best flash tutorials ever.